Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Podcast, a podcast about getting out from behind the keyboard and just talking. Each week, we invite a guest or two to sit down and talk about their life and their work. I'm Christopher Brown, your host, and this is the Cross Border Interview Podcast featuring Kurt Diamond. First off, I want to thank Mr. Kirk Diamond for sitting down with us today. Kirk, I'm going to start off the uh, the interview the same way I start off all my interviews. What does music mean to you? It's everything. It's the harmony of the world for me. You know what I mean? It's what keeps me going. Like life without music, like Friedrich said, would be a mistake. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like my entire life. Um, being Jamaican, I believe it's something with the island where it's it's deep rooted in, in who we are. Um, me personally, though, it was the only way that I could be rooted. Like after migrating to Canada in the 90s, my parents were one of those parents that, you know, we're new to a, a country and we're watching the news and there's like a lot of gangs out here because we lived in like a rough part of Toronto. So they wouldn't let us outside. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the only thing that we had, the only thing that we had was 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 the music to either take us back home or to escape being in the house. You know, so that's where it really came from. Um, my mom could sing a little bit. Um, but my dad, he was a DJ back in Jamaica. Right. And I guess that's where the love for it came from for my dad. Um because he had a sound system and he had a huge collection of not only like vinyls, but even videos of, of um, concerts. And that's what I literally learned my craft from, from standing in front of the mirror and pretend, pretending I was every artist that came on stage. You know what I mean? Like it's, I believe 80% of the, concerts out of Jamaica between 1979 and 1991, I probably know all of it by heart, or 90%. Um, they had my favorite, I knew my favorite, and it didn't have to be Christmas, but I listened to it all the time, but they had this Jackson's 5 Christmas album. <laughs> <laughs> right? And um, I'm just going off of memory now. Um, they had this Jackson 5 Christmas album and they had um, a Rick James album. I forgot what it's called, but it opened up and he was in like this full leather suit, like this purple suit. And I was like, why is he wearing this? And I remember I'm like 10 years old. I'm like, yeah, nobody wears this. This is weird. <laughs> you know, so yeah, those are my two favorites for sure. And because, I mean, I'm Jamaican, so hip hop at the time wasn't that big in Jamaica when I moved here. So when I moved here, I started to like really get into hip hop. So I ruined a lot of those vinyls trying to scratch and a whole bunch of stupid stuff. <laughs> um, it took a lot of research, to be honest with you, for me to be able to have an impact that I do now. Um, first of all, what I, I was, um, you know, it's Toronto, it's very multicultural. So I was, I was, you know, being introduced to things that I would have never been able to do before in Jamaica, you know, um, country and rock and all that stuff. Alanis Morissette and the Bare Naked Ladies, they had that song that I really like if I had a million dollars and stuff like that, which is probably my favorite song from them. So, I mean, and now that I live in Brampton, we have a lot of, so much different influences, but at the same time, I wanted to be true to myself, you know, being Jamaican born and being, Reggae would be my national music, if that's a thing, you know what I mean? So I want to be true to myself and still stay true to myself, knowing that I grew up in Canada, right? So I had to take all of those things and put it in a melting pot, and that's the sound that I give, you know and what I mean? I don't, I don't keep it in a box where it's like I'm only speaking about, you know, Jamaican titles or Jamaican issues or nothing like that. Like I'm speaking to everybody just from the platform of reggae. 
and when I was listening to your music, there was a depth of your music, of the writing style, the lyrics that you uh, uh, sing in your music. Where does your writing style come from? Is it things that are happening in your life, or is it things that you are seeing that are happening? Because we're going to get into the song "Let It Be Done." Because when I listen, when I heard that song, there's such a passion behind that song that I want to know where does your writing style for your lyrics come from? Um, my writing style for my lyrics are generated just by the love of sound and, and, and rhythm, right? Um, my favorite instrument's a drum, and sometimes I used to listen to drum solos and try to mimic my lyrics based on the pattern that the drum was making, so that's really where the flow comes from. But as far as the content of the lyrics, um, usually it's from experiences or from what I'm seeing, you know, um, a lot of it. Um, the song that I won the Juno for greater was literally me speaking to myself, like trying to speak life into myself as I was down for a bit. It's like music was not working at all. And it's just basically a conversation saying now or later I'll be greater. And, you know, and a lot of people seem to be in that same place in their lives where they they want to find something like a life, like a, 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 a what do you call it? A lifesaver, a paddle of things, <laughs> you know what I mean? To hold on to and, 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 and reassure them that what they're doing, they're on the right path, you know? So I think that's what made that song successful. And I just kept on speaking what I felt to be true to me. And, and that's what my lyrics. And let's talk about the new song, Let It Be Done, that came out in October. This song, uh, from what I understand, is a message to people during this political unrest time. How did you come up with this, mm. these lyrics? Because And this song, because it is such an emotional song that when you listen to it, it does talk about so many things that are going on in this world, and that you have tapped into something that I, I haven't heard an artist tap into yet. Um, to be honest with you, that song came out of me being un totally uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was it was a time where we're seeing, I mean, thanks to social media, um, we're seeing a lot more racial issues. You know, um, and it's something that we've only had to deal with it through movies or stories from other people that are older than us. So now to be in 2019, 2020, going into 2021, and it's like it's a resurgence of it again. Like, it's almost like where did like where did it come from? Like, how do I explain to my son, you know, people don't like you because of your skin and he's gonna have to try to deal with that. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's not a conversation that I thought I would have to have with him, but it turns out that it was something because now he's seeing it. He's go, He was going to school at the time. And um, no, he wasn't. He just came out this year, my bad. I keep on thinking it was like early 2020. <laughs> this year has um, been a complete cluster, so who knows what day it is right. actually. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and then the pandemic started and it was like, I don't know if tomorrow is even promised anymore. You know what I mean? The Amazon rainforest is on fire. We think that World War III is gonna start. Like, you know, it's, it's, it, it was just a big crap show, <laughs> you know? And um, I'm from a family where they pray a lot. So Let It Be Done was literally my prayer in music form. Like, I have no idea what was going on. Um, the world's gonna end just now everybody's gonna die from the same thing but people are still racist which don't make no sense you're gonna die too <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? so it was just like instead of seeing each other as family and that we need each other we don't like each other or not we don't like some don't like some you know like it, it was just crazy to me and to be honest with you when I do shows it is such a mix of cultures that I find it almost like my duty to always spread this message of love first. You know what I mean? Like a lot of my shows, like you would think that, 
what a lot of people think because I have dreadlocks and and I'm, I'm black and I'm Jamaican, it will be a lot of like you know Jamaican people, Rastafarian people. There, it's a full mix. I've done shows where my band was the only black people in the room. You know what I mean? And the love that we receive, it's no, it's no short of amazing, and we love that. You know, so we just have to do a part, especially if this is where we're, where, where our heart is in the world, where we're speaking from a place of love and let it be done was literally me speaking from my heart. And that, what's the reception been like right now? I know it's only been out for a few weeks now, but what are you hearing from people? What are you hearing from your fans about this song? Because like I said, uh, it was my first introduction into your music and I found it moving and I started downloading all your other music. So I have albums upon albums and EPs of uh, yours on my phone now. So I will say that I'm a fan of yours and I'm looking forward to you, grow you growing and me continuing on with your journey of your musical styles. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, the the reception is basically the same across the board. Like it's very, a, pe a lot of people are moved by it, you know. And I, I I don't know if it's because of I literally put what I was feeling into it. And I find that when 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 musicians or artists put their feelings into music, then it transpires to the people that actually view it or listen to it, you know. Um, and I feel it was something that, the song is something that everybody on the planet is going through at the exact same time. You know, so if you, doesn't matter if you live under a rock, you know exactly what's going on. You know, so I feel a lot of people are, that hear it, my fans and stuff like that, they're, they're seeing that we're all on the same page now. And I use a form of reggae, which I've really heard it done where we tried to bring it back to the 70s sound, you know what I mean, which is the golden era of reggae music. So that's yeah. where you'd have the Bob Marley and the, the Peter Tashes and stuff like that. So, um, and those, their music, was, it, this is the type of music that they were making, you know? So I just wanted to, there's nothing wrong with their formula. So I wanted to use that, I would call it medication in music that formula now because there was nothing wrong with it in the 70s and clearly there's nothing wrong with it now your the like we've talked about so far the lyrics of the the song are so powerful and then you released a, a an amazing music video to go along with this song shot in uganda what was the decision behind that because you in that in the music video and there will be a link in the show notes to for the uh, listeners if they want to listen watch it i recommend you do because there are some powerful moments in that music video that you capture and the director's captures that go along so eloquently with the lyrics that are being sung and i don't want to spoil it for people but you 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 throw back to many civil rights uh heroes martin luther king yeah, Nelson Mandela, Malcolm X are in there. You you you're able to capture that the black movement has not come that far, even though it's been fifty, sixty, seventy years since those people were around. Right, um, and that that was the the whole point of it. And I shot the video in Uganda, based on trying to let the world know that we are literally one planet. It's, we're not on a separate planet from everywhere else. Like, this same thing is happening everywhere. Um, and funny enough, when I shot the video in Uganda, um, it was still the pandemic and stuff like that, but I guess they had more freedom to do certain things, which is the reason why I did it. And now, um, as of last week, they're having police brutality protests now where like citizens are literally being shot in the street and I was like wow like this is the exact same thing that the video and the song is speaking about you know what I mean so it's not just for us in North America or in Europe it's for the people in Africa um, people in Asia um, Australia the other continent where these things are going on and like Martin Luther King said uh, um, a threat to, to, to justice 
or injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere you know so we have to wherever these things are happening we have to speak about it and bring light to it and try to stop it before it gets out of hand and starts spreading over into different communities and different countries and stuff like that do you think as an artist you need to speak up to say these things because uh, most people would go, why me? Why do I have to be the one to stand up and do it? But because you have the platform of music, of people listening to your music, uh, do you feel like you should be stepping up to say these things, to actually educate the Canadian public, the worldwide public of the things that are going on in the world right now? I believe so. And I'll tell you exactly why I believe so. There is no, nothing other than sports and entertainment that unite everybody together. You know what I mean? Especially music. Um, because at least with, with with sports, it's usually a rivalry thing where it's like, you know, one side versus the other side. So people are gonna have their favorite. I'm an Arsenal fan or I'm a Maple Leaf fan. I don't mess with anybody from Montreal. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that, can, <laughs> that can literally happen. But with music, it's different. You know, everybody comes together, like I said, in a show, and they're there just for that vibe. You know what I mean? And no offense to anybody, but politics doesn't do that. And religion doesn't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And these are the things that you would think that they would have the power to unite the people, or they should have the power to unite people, but nobody does it like music. Though. You know what I mean? And that's why I said at the beginning of the show that music is the harmony of the world because it literally brings everybody together. So if we could bring everybody together, then we could, when we should, you know, spread that message of love and unity and teach good over evil or right versus wrong. You know what I mean? Do you think music is needed right now in particular outside of the political activities that are going on and the civil unrest that are happening in uh, countries around the world? But with COVID-19, COVID-19 has locked us all in. We are in Toronto. You have gone to a lockdown in uh, Alberta. We are potentially going into one. We're not 100% sure. But right now we are searching for something. And when we're all alone, we are looking for an outlet and we're looking for something to actually bring us in. Do you think music is that key to actually unite us in some way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's... it's it definitely soothes the mind you know a lot of times like we put on headphones and, our, and we listen to music and our brain goes somewhere else you know what I mean even if it's and I find music to be like a time stamp like you know like there's probably a song that you may know that might bring you back to a place where times weren't like this you know um, a lot of people may listen to Spice Girls and go back to the 90s where they think that high school and those high heel shoes were cute they weren't but <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree to that one <laughs> <laughs> right and um, you know and I'm just joking but the 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 music is, is definitely needed now especially in this time we can't do anything we can't go outside um, I know when it just started people were getting tickets for even being outside like, why are you outside? Is it essential? Do you really need to be outside? Nope, here's a $700 ticket, you know? And then a lot of people just don't want to accept that this is what it is, so they're fighting with everything. I remember, I believe it was May, um, someone kept a house party, and I, this, it was maybe like 2,000 cars on someone's front lawn <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. right? So. It's like people just don't want, but think about it. They got together to listen to music. Yeah. It was for no other reason. Just me, they wanted a release. It's like they've had too much of this. So music is needed, not unsafely, not with, <laughs> you know, I mean, 2,000 people come together, but yeah. music is definitely needed to at least ease the tension, not because of whatever is going on politically and stuff like that, but just even if it's to bring it back to, having fun just remember driving your car or you know anything that takes your mind off of what's going to if it's even for 30 minutes so we are 
We are now living in a world that music has been able to uh, transcend, as we've talked about beforehand, genres and also communities. You have said that in the in the beginning of the show that uh, you and your band will be the only black people in the audience or in the in the group. Um, do you think with the ever changing world of music that more people are willing to go outside their comfort zone and find music that might actually not be in their typical wheelhouse because when I grew up, I grew up on country. My father listened to country, but moving out to Calgary, I listened to a diverse amount of music and I find I'm connecting with so many different types. Are you trying to connect with uh, not just, as you said, Jamaican people, but people of from Calgary who might listen to only country and bring that sense of music, that sense of, you know what, we all have a story to tell. We're all going to tell the story correctly and we're going to show that music does unite us at the end of the day. Yeah, it's funny you said that. Um, I'm currently working on a fusion song between reggae and country with um, a friend of mine, Matt Morrison, who's a great country singer here in Toronto. Um, and yeah, I mean, I lived in Saskatoon for four years, <laughs> right? So I know I have a lot of friends that listen to me that probably wouldn't usually listen to me. and. I know the type of music that they like, you know, so I like to reach out to other people from other cultures that wouldn't be um, really familiar with, with with what I do. But not only that, I love every other form of music as well. You know, um, I've always wanted to come to the Stampede, by the way, in, 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 in Calgary. I literally moved, um, to, I moved to Calgary the first year they canceled it because of COVID. <laughs> Really? I have not been to the Calgary Stampede, so I'm, I'm like kicking myself that I move here and the pandemic hit, so everyone's blaming me and my family right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest with you, the first time I went to Calgary to perform, it was at a reggae festival. It was August 15th, and it was snowing while I was performing. You picked a good place to go. <laughs> I love the winter. I love the snow. So I, I I was living up in northern Canada for a few years before I moved down to Calgary. So I'm I'm used to the snow at in the middle of July. But what's next? What's next for Kirk? Um, You've talked about the fusion uh, album that you're going to be releasing with Matt, or you're going to be working on with Matt. But what else? What else? Is, what else does 2021 have in store for Kirk? I'm trying to put together a, a live, not trying to, I'm putting together a, a virtual show because I don't think that live shows will be coming back in 2021. Um, you and me both. I don't I don't see it happening. But at the same time, virtual could be pretty cool. It just depends on how you, you, you produce it. You know what I mean? Like, it is so much things that you could do, especially with technology now, that I, I, I'm intrigued to see what I could come up with in my head as to how to perform and, 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 and how to bring it to the people. So I'm working on that. I have a couple other singles other than the one with Matt that I have to release because I've really, I've recorded over 55 songs oh, wow. since COVID started and we had nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Right? So, yeah, it was just recording and eating food. That was it. And now trying to work out at home is, is also not working out very well. I'll do one push-up and then say, yeah, I'm hungry. Look, I'm good. But, I'm, um, I did my exercise for the week. Yeah, my, my chest looks pumped now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm using that next time I have to work out. It looks pumped, guys. I'm good. I'm good. It's pumped. All right. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. But it's just, I'm just... Are you like still connecting to your music. audience? Are you still connecting to your fans through... Because musicians that I talk to have tried to find different ways to reach out to their fans during this unprecedented time. Whether it be virtual... Uh, uh, single, uh, virtual uh, 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 sessions online through Facebook Live. Whether it be through Instagram Live. Are you still performing in front of your fans, it, whether it be virtual? Because I know you've talked about you want to do a virtual. Uh, well, well, what I've been doing is because we have a private studio that we rehearse at. So I still have rehearsals. Um, 
every other week, I okay. believe. Okay. Uh, with the band. So a lot of times, because we don't know when we're going to have another show. So a lot of times we we'll, we go live on Instagram or on Facebook and have um, people look into the rehearsal. Like they see all the mistakes and who's not hitting the notes right. You know, that's definitely not the chord that you're supposed to be playing, Mr. Guitar Man. Like stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, and they enjoy it. Um, they think I'm a clown, but they enjoy it. Um, and that's the only way I know because before this happened, like I'm just starting to become savvy with social media because I was no good at it before. But now, because we can't go outside, it kind of forces you to at least, you know, figure something out. Yeah. You know, like I didn't know what Zoom was before the pandemic. Pretty and, sure nobody knew what Zoom was before the pandemic. And then, surprise, yeah. Zoom's now everywhere. Right. You know, so, yeah. We'll so, just have to wait and see. So before we wrap up here, uh, I just have a few uh, staple questions that I usually ask. Where can people find you? You do Now you do social media, but is it on, like, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or is there only certain ones that you use? No, I'm. I use all of them except for TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any cool videos to do. My son uses TikTok, but I don't. <coughs> um, um, but yeah, at Kurt Diamond, K I R K Diamond, on Instagram and Twitter, on Kurt Diamond Music on Facebook, and KurtDiamondMusic.com is my website. Awesome. And I have a cool. I have a cool app now that I got from Snap where if you download the Snap Hub and you go to your camera and you you look at my logo, then it will start playing my music video and it brings you to all of my social media. Oh, I've never heard of that app before. So what is it called again? So Snap Hub? Snap Hub. So it's S-N-A-P-D Hub. You look at it like you're... Yeah, place or, or whatever, and yeah, and you will get a camera. So when you put on the Ariel logo, it starts showing the video, and it it has a link to my social media. Well, that's awesome. It's I called it's called artificial reality or something like that. <laughs> I just so, found out about it last week. <laughs> well, hopefully it picks up now because I will link to all your uh, social medias uh, to the show notes as well. So that way people can follow you. I recommend people follow you. Uh, Kirk, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. It was fun. It was uh, great chatting with you. And like I said, you have a fan out here in Calgary. Once this pandemic is over, get out to Calgary so I can like come see you live in person. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. Right. Thank you so much for this. All right. No problem. Thank you. Thank you once again for listening to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. If you love this episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast, head over to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. All the links to our social media accounts are in the show notes or visit www.crossborderinterviews.ca. The Cross Border Interview Podcast was produced and edited by Miranda Brown and Associates Incorporated. Be sure to tune in for our next episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Once again, thank you. Thank you.